Today, I want to talk about forgive them for they know not what they do. And this is something that is from the biblical text. Last night, I came on just for a little moment after my workout and I was just inclined to hit the button. And we talked about being perfect. We talked to the people that was drawn to that particular live because, yeah, was drawn to that particular live because really and truly we be thinking like, oh, Facebook have this algorithm and, and, and TikTok has this, but there's a higher power mm -hmm, called your subconscious mind that taps you into everything that you need to know every video that you need to see based upon a signal that you were putting out. So everybody that was there was perfectly orchestrated for them to be there. Today, everybody that's supposed to be here is perfectly orchestrated for them to hear this message. So the ones yesterday I told them, okay, you have, you're the ones I'm really talking to, the ones that are here because you're the ones that have the rich soil. And I'm gonna plant a seed into your rich soil as you be perfect. And I want you to embrace and body being perfect. And I did that on purpose because the foundation, <laughs> your inner being is holding that, that stance for you. Is holding that alignment for you, but meanwhile, you're being hard on yourself, some of you in the physical reality, with your manifestations, with the place you are in life, with the way that you feel inside, but your inner being is saying, no, 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 everything perfect. Your inner being can see you through the eyes of God, because your inner being understands that you are God. Some of us forget that along the way. So I just was recapping what we were talking about late last night when I jumped on for a little while, but today we're going to be talking about forgive them. For they know not what they do. So when you get in alignment, when we get in alignment with ourselves, just like in the biblical text, when Jesus was trying to illustrate in the allegory text, I and the Father are one, that is considered being in alignment, no separation from God. This is why in the biblical text, Jesus in that allegory text would walk around and seeing people he would already. <laughs> The biblical text was teaching us how to be in alignment with ourselves, right? Teaching us that we're God in physical form. <laughs> Greater work shall we do. Teaching us that it was according to our belief that we'll be made whole. But in the biblical text, it was a moment when, when, when they, they played the story out as if Jesus was about to go get crucified, right? Yeah, and the multitude of people, the multitude was like wanting him to be crucified in this text, right? Why is that? Why is that? The multitude would turn on somebody that's in alignment with themselves. Well, maybe it's because the multitude wasn't in alignment with their self. It wasn't able to see through the eyes of God. They had ears and they were not hearing. They had eyes and they were not seeing. They were like, crucify him. Yeah. And in the allegory text, it says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So basically what it's saying here is, um, um, <laughs> they don't know their superpower. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't know that really and truly I was using my human imagination and seeing the blind man with sight. <laughs> I was seeing them healed and whole already. They don't realize that it was really their faith, their belief that really made them whole. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> and so everybody that was an extension, the 12 disciples, the multitude, and everything, every character in that allegory text was an extension of the Christ conscious one his so-called kingdom, this is why he knew what they would do and what, what role that they would play out in the allegory text. One of you, one of you will betray me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it was all a script that was played out in the subconscious mind, but he was so tuned in him and the father being one, he was tuned, tuned, so tuned into himself. 
that he knew these things already, right? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't even know their superpowers. They don't, they, they don't know that according to their faith, it was them healing themselves. But now in the allegory text, it's time for the crucifixion, right? They don't know, just like, just like silly Nicodemus, he didn't understand in the, in the, in the quote, how, how can one be born again? Must he enter into his mother's womb a second time? No, no, no. Why are you asking a silly question, Nicodemus? No. <laughs> Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And so in this particular allegory text, when it was time for the crucifixion, time for <laughs> the, the masses, the command of what the masses wanted to be done, to be played out, there was one that was on the side, there was a thief that was on the side, right, in the, in the story. They said, look, 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 look. In so many words, look, I don't, I don't know who you are. But um, could you take me, could you take me into your kingdom? And in the allegory text, it says, today, right now, because I am in my subconscious, I'm connected to the superconscious, right now you shall be with me in paradise. <laughs> this allegory text was teaching us how to penetrate to that subconscious mind and become one with the superconscious mind and remember that you're God. But a lot of people didn't understand it. This is why the biblical text said, he who has an ear, let him hear. Because it wasn't for everybody. All the while, all the while, everybody in the kingdom, they was looking at the matrix. They was governed underneath the law of polarity, looking at everything from two sides. When, 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 when the biblical text was trying to teach them, no, no, it's just one thing. A kingdom divided against itself, it cannot stand. What are you talking about? All is God. There's only one God, one faith, one baptism. Forgive them. For they know not what they do. <laughs> it's funny how prior to the crucifixion, you know, prior to you rising to your higher self, God, that there gonna be some people that ain't even gonna we will respect you, some people that ain't gonna hear what you gotta say. And in layman's terms, sometimes it's it's like you gotta go out from your own hometown. You know how the little rappers and the little people, little singers and stuff, you know, they, they go out, they move from their own hometown and then they blow up and then everybody in the hometown, they, then they want to accept them then, like, right? Yeah, they want to accept them then, you know, you know, once they, you know, start making millions and start becoming popular or whatever the deal is, then everybody in the hometown like, yeah, 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 I know her. You know, I get that. I get that. I'm from New Orleans. Some people never even spoke to me and they be texting me. Hey, 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 what's up, B? I'm like, oh, hey, okay. You've been had my number for um 10 years. You never spoke to me, but you saw, oh, I saw your videos oh 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 <laughs> but i'm not in the state no more and it's equivalent to in the biblical text when jesus the christ conscious one <laughs> when he was doing his thing you know talking like in the parables it was like who is that isn't is it that mary's boy oh that's just joseph little boy the little carpenter's son who does he think he is but then, then after, after he rose, he, he tapped into his inner being and he was resurrected. Oh my God, he is the Messiah. <laughs> Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so oftentimes when we finally tap in, that's when everybody wanna, wanna be <laughs> flocking to you, right? Why is that? Why is that? Well, the biblical text told us that too, because if I be lifted up, <laughs> then I have the power to draw all men to me. So when you, God, in your kingdom, resurrect yourself by the renewing of your mind and everybody in your kingdom gonna be drawn to you. So this is why it's so important that you understand that you are perfect, that you are God right now in your physical reality. <laughs> this is so important for you to renew your mind so that you can be resurrected because everyone in your kingdom, God, is you pushed out. And so, so you know, like on Easter, you know, in religion, you know, we, we, we celebrating 
the crucifixion and rising, right? But every, every year on Easter, all that really is about is you. <laughs> yeah, it's really about you rising because everybody in your kingdom, and it is an extension for, from you or of you and of your subconscious mind. When you move, they move, right? So if you rise again, God, then everybody in your kingdom must rise with you. Yeah, this is what happened. Because prior to the crucifixion, some of them people didn't believe. <laughs> but then afterwards, woo, when word got around, they believed. Because energetically, energetically, the energy of you tapping into your inner being, God, has enough power to resurrect everybody in your kingdom. Everybody in your kingdom. This is why if you, if you tear down that allegory text and they tell you all about um, God sending, sending the son to, 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 to die on the cross for your sins to be resurrected, this is what it's talking about, right? The sin, the real true sin is when you're not in alignment with your higher self. But when you get back into alignment with your higher self and you get resurrected again, then now you have the power to save everybody in your kingdom. They got to come with you, baby. They got to come with you because they only stem from you. They stem from your subconscious mind. Yeah. Father, forgive them. But they know not what they do. Remember, you too were sleeping one day in your journey. You too was in the great sleep of the illusion of separation in the matrix. Father, forgive them. Because they know not what they do. So when you're saying forgive them, really you're saying forgive a part of me because all of this is me experiencing me because nothing else exists but me because there's only one God, one faith, one baptism. I and the Father are one. I'm just having a human experience. So, Father, forgive me as you forgive them because we knew not what we did. So now, since we know that we are perfect, now that we are in alignment with our inner being, our higher self, now we think it not robbery to be equal with God is akin to us being resurrected. This is a true resurrection, baby. Ain't nothing outside of you, baby. It's all you, and I'm you too. I'm your subconscious mind trying to get you to remember so that you can forgive everybody in your kingdom. Forgive even yourself when you were in your kingdom because everybody is you. Forgive even yourself when you thought two different thoughts, when you thought two different ways, when you separated yourself from the love of God. Forgive them, forgive me because I knew not what I was doing. So now that you know that you are doing, now you could have one good thought. Now that you know what you're doing, now you could understand that all things are working out for you. Now that you know what you're doing, now you could tap into your superpower. Now that you know what you're doing, now it gives new meaning to <laughs> he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Because the world is not even functioning or existing without me, without my essence, without my energy, without my attention to anything in this world. It don't even exist until I give attention to it. <laughs> now you finally understand what resurrection is. It was renewing of your mind the whole time, God. It was all about you. Every parable, every character in that biblical text, it was all about you getting to this point, God, to renew your mind. <laughs> and so now today, today, everybody in your kingdom gonna be with you in your glory. Because today you finally resurrected. You finally got your mind right. And so them being with you in your glory, that means you have the power to manipulate the energy God in your kingdom with everybody. Thought by thought by thought by thought. Nobody should be wilding out in your kingdom no more now because you're resurrected God. Your kingdom has come God. <laughs>
Your enemies have been made your footstools. You've already walked through the valley of the shadow of death and you have feared no evil because you knew you were always connected. You've been through the valley already and you came out God. You've been crucified already. Yeah, you did all of those things. You were Lazarus, you were dead. Remember when you were dead God? <laughs> Remember when you were dead? Remember when you were those dry bones? You had to save your own self when you was those dry bones. You saved your own self by your spoken word. Son of man, can these bones live? Surely God, you know it. Prophesy unto these bones. Tell these bones, Thus said the Lord God, I will cause breath to enter into you. Breath is life. I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. All of this was about you. You left a book and it was like a personal journey about yourself. About religion and, 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 and false doctrine or people that just wasn't tapped in just yet. They, they tried to teach it to you their way. They tried to tell you it was something outside of you that you must bow down and worship. Baby, get off of your knees. Wipe your knees off. It's not for you to be bowing down. It's for you to get up back on that throne again. We need you on the throne, God. You're the savior that we've all been looking for. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. You're the savior that everybody in the kingdom been looking for. You're the Atom. <laughs> You're the Moses. You're the Jacob that was wrestling with God. Trying to climb Jacob's ladder to get to the point in your physical reality where that pineal blade opened up and was able to see again with your first eye your Jacob that was you father forgive them for they know not what they do that was you wrestling with God remember when you said I have seen God face to face and I have lived that was you getting a glimpse of who or what God was it was you looking in the mirror at yourself father forgive them for they know not what they do. Even in the beginning, when you when you when you wrote this book about yourself to yourself, in the so-called beginning of the so-called recreation, really and truly, that wasn't your first rodeo. You've been doing this thing for eons and eons. But in the so-called beginning of the last book that you wrote in Genesis, where they say that. You bit off of a silly apple and the serpent energy, your kundalini energy told you, oh no, 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 it's just gonna show you good and evil. It's gonna show you polarity, it's gonna show you the split. <laughs> You're gonna be like the other gods. <laughs> And you decided to go into the matrix and participate in this so-called game of life with the split, with the illusion of separation for the experience, to get to know yourself because, because God, you had to get to know the totality of you, your good versus your evil, your light versus your darkness, your separation from your inner being, but you will always <laughs> <laughs> you were always attached to your inner being, so you were just, you were the prodigal son too. You, you just like walked away from your inner being, your total essence. But we, we, we knew you'd return. We knew you'd be here on this live talking to your subconscious mind. Father, forgive them. It's okay. For they know not what they do. They were just exploring themselves. They were just experiencing themselves in the totality of themselves. 
<laughs> See, they had to learn or know what love was not to separate themselves from the bosom of just this powerful form of energy that exists. <laughs> they had to know what it was not to appreciate the unconditional essence that it is. Yeah. They had to know separation to experience the totality of God. They had to know what it felt like to be pushed down to human form using only 10% of brain capacity to really appreciate when you get back on the throne using 100% of brain and, and intelligence or capacity being tapped into infinite intelligence that knows all things right here in your subconscious mind when you make the union with your superconscious mind. Father, forgive them. For they know now what they do. So now since you're back to perfection, God, since you're back on the throne of God again, <laughs> now the fun begins. Now you can appreciate life as being the game that it always was. Now you can be easy with yourself and you realize now that joy is the key, that love is the key, that, 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 <laughs> that you're never going to get it wrong, God. That you are your reflection, so now you can be easy on them now, God. Yeah, you could be easy on them. Because you know you are manipulate the, manipulating the energy in them. You are thinking them to be that way, God. It was that way the whole time from the beginning until now. But you just had to expand your mind to get to this knowing, God. It is all you. Welcome home. Welcome home. You've been resurrected. <laughs> Welcome home. You, you have been forgiven. And your kingdom has come. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm good. Just be checking in from Tennessee. Thank you, Big D, for being here. Hey, sure, Mika. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Isn't it a false story, meaning it not true? Well, some people feel like the story happened in physical form. Your belief will be whatever it is, and it's okay to believe whatever you want to believe. I personally believe it is a story about you. It's a story about me. In physical form, I don't believe that because the physical is really an illusion. It's all based upon your thought. The physical is just everybody's subconscious mind playing out. So if your subconscious mind believe that it happened in physical form, you will be that type of person that wants to go, you know, out of the country to go to see the stone that they claim to say that Jesus walked upon and your subconscious mind will find little clues to make that true because that's your belief. A belief is something that you done told yourself over and over again. This is why wholeheartedly some people that believe in Buddha, some people that believe in Krishna, that believe in Jesus wholeheartedly, they'll have some type of proof to them some type of law or belief in their mind that said it's true, but guess what? At the end of the day, none of this is real. <laughs> none of it is real. The matrix is an illusion of separation. So true to you, maybe, might not be true to other people. But as far as I see it in physical form, no. As far as I see it, I take that biblical text personal. It's like a book of my becoming. But you could do what you want to and you can make it true for you. And you could go to Egypt and be like, oh yeah, Jesus was right here. And then you could believe, oh, they never found the tomb because, oh, it was like a miracle. And then you're going to believe that. And then there are some people in the physical reality that really believe that a white man is going to crack this guy. And they hold it on to that belief. And if I talk to them, if they were to stumble upon this life, they'll be like, this is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost because it goes against what my subconscious mind program that I put up in here, that I put up in here.
beliefs. But really and truly, if the people want to expand their consciousness, all they have to do is tell their subconscious mind something different over and over because all they did to get that first belief is tell it over and over. Maybe they went to church over and over and they heard that this black, this white man was coming to correct this guy. Then some people are like, no, no, he's not going to be uh, white. He's going to be black man. Yeah, he's going to be black when he comes with the horses to correct this guy. You know, everybody have their own separate belief. But it's really about them. If religion does not bring you back to you, I don't know if I'll believe that. Because you're all that exists. You're the operant power here, God. <laughs> so you take it that way. If I'm all that exists, if the matrix is just an illusion of my subconscious mind being played out how I'm thinking it to play out, then is it real? You ask yourself that because you're God. And we're waiting on you to, to get that part right. Because you're running your kingdom. You're running your reality. You wrote the script. And you could change the script at any time. And even, even, even in movies, they'll, they'll show you this. Even like in Matrix, they'll show you like when, when Neo saw a glitch. Somebody had to change their mind. When, when Neo went to, to speak to the black lady, the black oracle, and, and she said, no, I, I don't think you are the one. But, but Neo changed his mind. And he came out of there and he was like, well, she said that I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not the one. But then when Morpheus needed his assistance, he changed from being Neo in EO to being the one O in E that must save himself, that must save Morpheus, because he was the operant power. <laughs> but he had to get to know it for himself. He had to go within himself. He couldn't, he couldn't be looking outside for another one. He ain't seen nobody else around, so he had to become the one because it was a test of time that brought out his true character. Oh, our true character comes out in survival mode. When all hell breaks loose, our true character come out as a meal, true inside of him, true what was inside of him, which was inside of his subconscious mind was, he was the one. He was just afraid of being the one. Most often than not, we're afraid of the power that we have within ourselves. But yeah, 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 you the one. Yeah, you the one, you the only savior. It's a lot to pick up on. It's a lot to grasp if you're hearing it for the first time. But I got a lot to do in my little matrix today. And I, would, I promise you, I wouldn't be on here trying to tell you no, no lies. <laughs> you the one. That must save yourself. And in saving yourself, you save everybody out there in your kingdom by the renewing of your mind. Save them. Because you know what? Here, 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 check this out. Check this out. God, um... They got people in your kingdom that's sick and they're looking for a savior. They're hurting so bad. They're looking for a savior. They don't believe. Some of them are saying, Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief. They're talking to you. They're talking to you. They want you to see them through the eyes of God so that they can be made whole. They want you to believe in them that they can walk on the water. They want you to show them that it is possible. And all you have to do is look at them through the eyes of God. All you have to do is stay in alignment with your inner being. And you give life to them. It's that easy, but you gotta get on your throne for the people in your kingdom, because they need you. Yeah, and you at this moment, you needed me. You needed me, your subconscious mind, to give you a pep talk for how you need to go and operate things in your kingdom when you get off this life. Because everybody in your kingdom shouldn't be sick. Everybody in your kingdom shouldn't be broke and be unhappy. Not when God is in the midst. <laughs> Not when God is in the midst of those people. No. 
You should have a multitude running behind you, wanting to hear what you had to say. You should have them wanting to just touch you so they could be made whole. Because you're so much in alignment that they feel your aura, they feel your inner being, they feel your energy. And they just saying, oh, if I could just touch the Savior. Oh, if I could just touch the him of his garment because he knows how to do this thing. He knows how to stay in alignment. And I'm merely a thought from stemming from his subconscious mind. He knows how to fix me, so to speak. He is the operant power here. That's why I give so much attention to him. That's why when he moves, I move. That's why when he's resurrected, I'm drawn even closer to him. When he's resurrected, then when he lift himself up, I realize that, oh my God, he is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. And if he could lift himself up and be resurrected, surely I can. Let's see. Let me go back a little bit. Amen. I say yes, yes, yes. Amen. Oh my God. I've been telling. Oh, they got a glare on here. Oh, I've been telling a friend this about me. A prophet is without honor in his own home. Definitely. You ain't gonna get no honor over that. You just, you just, you just mirrors boy. The carpenter's boy. Hey, I hey move. Thank you for being here, babe. Hey, Carmel. Thank you. Greetings, Reflection. I made a live. So excited. This made my day. Oh, you did? Oh, you made my life. Oh, I thought you were saying you made. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you made it, babe. Yeah. Let's see. Please be. Go find something safe to do. Oh, you're talking to somebody else. Yeah. Hello. I've seen. I've been missing your lives, but I'm here. I'm glad. Oh dear, yeah, I haven't seen you in a minute. I'm glad you're back. Kimberly from Kansas. Thank you for being here, Kimberly. That was amazing. I love you. I love you too. Hey, Mr. Mol uh, Holistic, I haven't seen you in a minute either. Yeah. So this is how I work. Hey, Mayo, Sprint Street Builder. Hey, miss, looking good as usual. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That was amazing. I love you. Okay, I caught up. But yeah, that's how it goes. So this is the meaning of Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. You have you're sleeping on a superpower was in your physical reality. You're sleeping on this connection, and it's just a thought move. It's a thought by thought. It's getting back in alignment to save everything and everybody in your kingdom, God. Forgive them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Give to give to Caesar that which is Caesar. But give to God that which is God. That means, that means go ahead and play around in, in the matrix and do those things that feel cool and fun. Have, enjoy the journey. Yeah, enjoy the journey. You know, you know, go to your, go to your little work if that's what you want to do. Yeah, pay your little taxes and all the little stuff that you want to do. Yeah, pay, participate in the matrix. You created the matrix to participate and have fun in. Yeah, but give to God. That which is God. And that, that means that connection. That means that time. That, that's really what he's talking about when they talk about the 10% tithes. Yeah, you gotta give that point to God. That mind, the renewing of that mind, that meditation time. Yeah, that that, that union of the, the bride and the groom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give that to God. Why are you playing the game? Don't forget to give that to God. Because this is the part that lives on for eons and eons, lifetime after lifetime. Yeah, give that 10% to God now. Yeah, when we get off this line, we go all go our separate ways. But don't forget to renew that mind. Don't forget that part. Because that's where your superpowers lie. In the game that you're playing, you need your superpowers. You need to learn the controller and what every button means as you play this game of life. You're only winning, <laughs> you're only winning and learning, but you gotta understand this here part. 
I am the head. Yeah, I am the way, the I am part. I am God. If you don't know that, you lost in the matrix in looking at the polarities. And you are one of the ones of the multitude that wants to crucify someone who's tapped into themselves. You are one of the ones in the multitude that's saying, stone him. <laughs> Didn't he say he was the Christ? <laughs> yeah. That's you. And to you, that, that's what the, the scripture was saying. Forgive them. They lost their dare go mind. They done got so milked into this game that they think the game real. They, they, they think the game is real. Forgive them. Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, how long, how long will I suffer with thee? Mm -hmm. I was talking about you. When you get so caught up into the game. I know some of you are here. You little Debbie, Debbie Downers. You little Dalton Thomases. You have to be here because that defies the law of polarity. There gotta be two sides. I know you up in here. Yeah, you. Forgive them. For they know not what they do. They don't know their superpower. Yeah. Yeah. And, they, and that's why they talk about the fool in the biblical text. That, that fool that despise wisdom and knowledge order and instruction the fool don't 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 want to get to know themselves it says in the biblical text the fool has said in their heart that there is no god ha! they are corrupt they have done abominable works there is none that do it good Ooh! why was must one be a fool to say that there is no god because he is god yeah that, that's real foolish to say that about yourself. Oh, there's, there's no God, really. Casting that upon yourself is like to say, I don't exist. I don't know who I am because I am God. But only fools do that. <laughs> only fools say in their heart there is no God when they sit, when they're not sitting on the throne. Yeah, yeah. When they done went out, when they done went out so far away from home like the prodigal son, that they don't realize that they had everything at home. That they just got off the throne and willingly went out to nothingness to explore themselves. Oh, they get so foolish when they go out call themselves running away from the bosom of God, they get so foolish. <laughs> they get lost in the sauce, they get lost in the game because in the game starts to feel really real. And the essence starts to feel like nothing. And so they go and they try to find cars and they try to find houses and they try to find love, oh foolish ones. They try to find freedom. <laughs> when everything that they were looking for was already inside of them, they could have stayed home. But it was part of the game for them to explore themselves because they were the love they were looking for. They got those things in physical form because they thought in the having of those things that they would feel better, really. But all they had to do was go home, back to the bosom, back to seeing with their first eye. Back to being powerful and manipulating all the energy. Home back to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, okay everyone, you need to go. Thank you for being here, Miss Being So. I know you gotta get to work and stuff. I appreciate you. So that was the video. That was the message today to remind you of you because you're all that exists here, God. Thor by Thor by Thor, you have the power to change your situation and I feel so proud of you being resurrected again because now in this point of this stage of your life, now the real change begins. The real change. And you and you know how they say you know them by their fruit. You begin to see the fruit. You begin to see people being drawn to you just based upon your thoughts. They want to understand the parables now. 
just like in the biblical text. This is what the multitude was coming nigh for. They wanted to understand. They wanted to have the good enough soil for the, the, the seed to take root and blossom to be like the Christ conscious one. And so this is what everybody in your kingdom should be doing with you, around you. You should be that light that they're flocking to. And this doesn't have to be that because you just giving them your money. I'm not talking about physical stuff. Because you're giving them your money. And because you the, you the man and know how to lay it down. Or because, or because you have this kind of car. Or because you are the president of this kind of corporation. No, I'm not talking about none of those things in physical form. I'm talking about your aura. I'm talking about your, your, your inner being. Your, your dialogue. Your spoken word. Your energy. That people are coming around you wondering, what is it about you? There's a reason why I'm with you. Tell me more. I love the way you speak. Where are you from? There's a light about you. You're different. However they put it to you, it's because you've been resurrected again. You've been born again. And once you've been born again, ain't no going back. You have been there already. Ain't no going back. <laughs> Lord, take this cup from me. Nah, there ain't no cup about to be taken from you. No, you know too much now. You know too much now. You ain't, can't, can't, can't go back. You can't dumb yourself down no more, God. So you might as well get comfortable being on that throne and know what to do to manipulate the energy of the beings in your physical reality now because ain't no going back. You know too much. But you decided to wake up when you did. Can't hit the snooze button no more. No, 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 no. You woke now. Now just just enjoy the journey. Get to know yourself on a deeper level in in in, in rain. Rain and let your kingdom come. Every day your kingdom should be getting better. Every day you should be experiencing joy, bliss, love, and every desire of your heart now because you reign again. Every day, no exception, no more whining. You have people out there that are waiting for you to put them to work, to put them to use through your thought, through your spoken word, through your heart, through your human imagination. You need to be putting your people to work. For you. You need to be working upon you getting better because as you get better, everybody in your kingdom is getting better too. That's your job. That's your job is being God in your kingdom. This is why I said take this cup from me because it was it's a lot to bear. Yeah, it's a lot to bear. When your loved ones come to you that, that are sick and maybe even dying. You have to keep the faith and see them whole. You have to breathe, breathe breath in them. You have to look at them as being well now. You can't be sitting there doubting and saying, well, maybe this is it. How dare you kill people, or destroy people, or shorten people's life in your kingdom. Give them life, God. How dare you? How dare you say, well, well maybe next time. How dare you, God? When you have the power to make it this time instead of next time. How dare you? They waited on you to see them whole, see them healthy, see them well, see them prosperous, see them through the eyes of God. They need you. <laughs> so today, you say to them today, through your habitual thought, you say to them, Today you shall be with me in paradise. And you rewrite their life in your human imagination. Because that's what being resurrected is all about doing. With everybody. With everybody. Yeah. I see. Wow, so many confirmations in this life within 24 hours of asking. There you go. It's all you, it's all your subconscious mind asking and receiving and manipulating energy here. Hey Joe, thank you for being here. That's right, I desire to continue to learn more exactly. Hey Miss Biz, thank you, thank you. 
So anyway, <clears throat> this video, I normally say this video is from my heart to yours, but today I'm gonna end this video and say, this video was from your subconscious mind to you. Take it and use it and edify the church. You are the church. You are all that exists. Make way. Your kingdom has come. Be blessed, babe. Have a good day.